Hello guys and welcome to a new Stone Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you the first game in round 2 of the second Steel Division 2 Championship. Big thanks to Tiger for setting me up with all the replays, really do appreciate his help. And what I'm going to be doing for you over the coming couple weeks, I'll be covering all of the replays from this tournament, uh, which took place a few weeks ago, and I've only just got around to covering. But I am assured that there are many decent replays to be seen. But yeah, we'll be covering all the replays from round two to the finals. Now, just a note, there won't be any information on picks or bans. Um, or map bans in this tournament just because a lot of that is done privately when the players set up the game so going around and asking everyone to remember uh, what the map bans and player bans and um, not player bans the uh, division bans for every game uh, would be quite tedious and uh, probably quite annoying to the players involved so I didn't bother going around and asking everybody uh, what was going on uh, we're just going to take a look at what we got so we're starting today on Slutsk and Ginx is going to be playing with the 184th Rifles and the Vanguard deployment type. And we have Sean on the Axis side with the 122nd and, of course, the Balanced deployment type. Sean, of course, well known for his use of the Balanced deployment type. Uh, we've seen it many times before and I'm sure we're going to see it many times again. Uh, he loves to really blunt those Vanguard and Flatline divisions and then take advantage of his income in phase C to really drive the game home. So generally we tend to see like longer games with Sean because uh, he's not going for those early wins necessarily. That doesn't mean they can't happen with balance but they're just less likely to happen because if you're up against a Vanguard division or a flatline division they're going to be able to reinforce quicker than you can which makes it very very difficult to continue a push that you may have already made if you've sort of gained some ground for example. But let's uh, talk a little bit about the map. On the bottom side, we've got this uh, nice open ground area. I expect Sean probably just to play defensively across this town and the trees here. And considering that Ginx is using the 184th, it's kind of unlikely that he's going to try and push across the open, but he does have the one, the ISU 122 there. On the top side, it's just the uh, town grind, of course, and then we've got the high ground in the center. But let's uh, have a quick look at what both players are putting down. So on the top side here, two MG42s, Taka Ampuya. We've got the Grenadiers, another Taka Ampuya there. Uh, Pioneeri, Barifura, Grenadiers. Commandant at the back there, Commandant from the start of the game. We've got the uh, Stug 3. Down the middle road, loads of Grenadiers, Barifura, Flammenwerfer leading the charge. AT gun also there looking for some transport snipes. On the bottom side, it's just going to be an IG, a bunch of Erza Struppen and an MG42. On the side of Ginx, he's got an infantry gun heading up to the high ground on the very bottom side, ISU-122 out in the open, backed up by an 85 mil at the start of the game. That is kind of crazy. We've got the uh, two Stroki DP there, Sniperi in the center, Sniperi heading up onto the hill. We've got Tango Desaniki pushing into the town with a sniper. Sniper on the top side, another infantry gun already down. All these Stroki coming in with the ZIS-42s, which is an interesting choice, 122 mil uh, how it's uh, at the start at the back so already uh, Ginks kind of seeding ground in the center he hasn't brought anything to control the front line here as certainly a bunch of decent close range infantry in the town which will hold back Sean's grenadiers uh, the grenadiers of Sean aren't particularly great he could get right up in front of those with the Taka and Desaniki if he wanted to uh, in order to take those out because Although they are three-star veterancy, like the Molotovs will unseat the Grenadiers and then the submachine guns will pretty much go to work. These Flammenwerfers, uh, they have managed to get into cover here, which is a quite nice position for them. Takes away the high ground. This high ground is really, really useful for covering the town for your infantry advances. And one thing that Ginks has to be really careful with here is when he moves up his Tanko Dasaniki, he doesn't just get them mown down by the machine guns of the Grenadiers. That's generally what the m2a1s are there for but of course the at gun on the main road makes that difficult and the stug 3 on the high ground is also helping dramatically we got the stroki finally arriving here the sniper that already drops out has been killed already by the grenadiers uh, once these unload those grenadiers will be engaged oh this is going to be an absolute massacre for these stroki oh no 
Well, the Grenadiers just ready for them. They're all pinned down almost immediately. Oh, boy. Some of them are going to surrender, but still under fire. Damn, that is a lot of infantry going down very, very quickly there. These Tanko Desaniki in the main town are struggling to make ground, that's for sure. Sean's still pushing up with his Erzastropin and Grenadiers. The Ginks here maybe a little bit less experienced than Sean. And is definitely going to be struggling because of that. But his IG... His IGs, yeah, uh, technically they are IGs, infantry guns, uh, but his infantry guns are going to be able to hold back the Grenadiers from a distance, so that will stop Sean from pushing too far forwards too quickly. But in cases like this, you definitely don't want your sniper running into Flammenwerfers. That is less than ideal. His, this sniper is going to be able to help cover against the Tango de Saniki, and honestly, Sean running forwards like this might be really good for Gink's Tango de Saniki. This is like the perfect scenario for defensive close range infantry. When when sort of longer range infantry tries to engage you by running into the buildings nearby, you just get so many kills so quickly by using those. Oh, the JU-87 D5 there comes in with the bombing strike. The 250 kilogram bomb plus the 450 kilogram bombs that take out one of the infantry guns. Still two alive. LA-5 FN, can it get the kill? That JU-85, or 87, sorry. Uh, certainly turning very quickly, but the LA-5 should be able to come around and get onto the back of that, should it try to retreat. Uh, 122 is currently engaging the MG-42 on the hill. Uh, that's not so bad. It might end up killing the Stug eventually if he starts targeting that. But these Tanko Desaniki have found themselves surrounded now as the Grenadiers have continued to move forwards. The LA-5 FN should get this kill if it can line up. It cannot. Struggling to get the kill there. This was a little while ago uh, when the fighters were still having trouble, maybe. So, yep, LA-5 there couldn't quite get on target. I'm not sure if this uh, tournament was played on the patch where the fighters were fixed or slightly fixed. I think it was played on the ones where it was slightly fixed, but not completely fixed. <laughs> so bear that in mind. I think uh, fighters then tend to behave a lot better now. Uh, Pack 40 is engaging the ISU 122, getting some nice side shots in there. The MG42, though, going to maybe clean up the infantry gun. This could be a really nice engagement here for Sean. There goes the ISU 122 in a burning wreck, and the infantry gun that was supporting it also going to come under fire now from the Pack 40. And the MG does get taken out. Good by support weapons. Now there is, of course, the 85 on the bottom side. Might help stop the JU-85, or JU-87, sorry, from getting the bombing strike in. But not quite. Nope, bomb's still going to land and pin down both of those Strauki for the time being. The Ezastruppen going to try and make a push forwards. On the top side, Pioneeri. And the Grenadiers engaging Strauki that have once again, again been thrown into the meat grinder. Uh, those guys are getting pinned down very, very quickly. Finally, they only have uh, those rifles. They're not particularly strong at uh, medium range. But uh, when they are in cover with two-star veterancy, they can do some damage, that's for sure. This unit of infantry managing to get all the way up is pushing Sean to a 15-9. to nine. He has managed to secure himself the double tick. Going to end the game in 13 minutes and 50 seconds as Sean continues to put on the pressure. JU-87's once again coming in. Looking for the bombing strike onto the Strauki. Will the third shot from the 85 manage to stop it? Oh, just in time. Strauki going to survive this LA-5 FN though takes care of one of the JU-85 or JU-87s. I don't know I keep calling them JU-85s. <laughs> I don't even ever think there was a JU-85, and if there was, it probably wasn't used very much. Either way, LA-5FN, too fast for its own good once again. JU-87 does manage to get away, but has taken down one, so not so bad. ISU-122. Going to be busy engaging the Grenadiers in the building there. Over time, the Grenadiers will end up being hidden once again. And the ISU-122 will lose its line of sight. But I expect the Ginx is bringing that in to deal with the Stug in the open up on top.
Sharky DP now pushing across here from Kinks. This could be a very solid push onto the support weapons of Sean should they make ground quickly. However, uh, the flag that he's going for is quite far back and the 17 to 7 is quite far in favour of Sean and he really needs to gain back control of this flag for example. The flags on the top side here can't afford to relinquish this area of the map that's for sure. The centre and the top side of the hill here, this in particular is definitely hard to hold from the red side but this flag ideally should stay in the hands of the red side for most of the game and uh, on the bottom side uh, potentially you could put some pressure up here but of course Gink's already losing the ISU-122 here pretty expensive indeed it's ISU-122 currently going for the shot onto the IG-18. Sean has noticed. Will the ISU-122 get the kill? Yes, it will. The HE damage on the ISU-122 is actually pretty nice. It's got the three damage there. So enough to do two damage to support weapons, which is really good for killing them off like that. Starkey DP, of course, have two machine guns. So going to absolutely destroy that 45 mil. And I mentioned how this Starkey DP fish could be effective. And it seems to be working against the... Uh, infantry of Sean and one thing that the 122nd infantry has in terms of problems in the early game is is certainly like lack of infantry quality you can see that Sean's using grenadiers Erzastruppen and Pioneeri which are pretty lackluster infantry without veterancy and that is really showing when things like Storki DP come in to challenge them or for example the Tango Dasaniki in the town uh, taking care of grenadiers. Now this Tanko Dasaniki might kill off both of those grenadier squads. It does indeed. Stays hidden there. Manages to take care of a couple of them. It's actually putting up a decent fight. Of course Sean certainly looking a lot more experienced but it's nice to see Ginks throwing back some punches as well. I see 122 still moving forwards with the attack move order. The Stug can certainly get penetration at this sort of range. And with the two-star veterancy, it's a lot more likely to hit its first shot. Ginks is going to have to be careful moving that up. The Stroke DP needs to unload. These Stroke DP needs to continue their attack move order. They were making such good progress, giving Sean time to reinforce this. You can see he's, like Sean's actually rushing to bring in more Grenadiers here because he's a little worried that there's going to be a huge salient on this bottom side shortly should the Strauki DP make more ground because basically what will end up happening is the Strauki DP in theory could line up on the edge of this town stop other infantry coming in uh, whilst kind of allowing the secure of the bottom side which actually would give three flags to Ginks there's not too much down here uh, to stop Ginks from doing that of course Ginks may be more prioritized in the town and trying to take this back uh, getting a little bit sort of tunneled on that top side but it happens Dug 3 looks like it's going to make a play coming up to engage the ISU 122 surprised that Sean didn't give that the attack order because it means that they're going to fire at the same time and the ISU 122 it takes a shot does get penetrated but of course has a lot more damage so it does manage to take out the Stug 3 nicely we'll continue to engage uh, these grenadiers now and yeah I felt like that was a little bit of a mistake from uh, Sean because he could definitely see the ISU so he could target the Stug 4 before it moves up but the Stug 4 came up at an angle which meant it had to turn before it could fire which meant that it didn't manage to shoot before the ISU did and be able to retreat in time to not take a shot back. Um, so yeah I feel like that was a little bit of a missed micro there from Sean but he's still doing very well pushing forwards the Grenadiers on the bottom side to try and find another flag here. 85 is going to stop that in its tracks but could leave itself vulnerable to Mortify. I feel like uh, a couple mortars on this bottom side could just clean up this 85 and then that would open up the flag on that bottom side. Uh, JU85, 87, sorry, coming in again. <laughs> this time actually going for the 85 mil directly. Uh, looks like Sean's just going to try and overrun that uh, with a couple of JU87s. He's brought the JU87 on this left side out further so that these aren't both hit 
by the same shot from the 85. Yeah, that's going to continue to shoot this JU-87 until it's forced to fall back. And then this one in the meantime can come in and bomb that directly. Now the LA-5 going for the shots. Looks like Sean's purposefully telling the JU-87 to engage the LA-5FN so it takes a really sharp turn. It makes it very difficult for the LA-5FN to get on target. And then he can finally... Uh, tell it to fall back. Meanwhile, the JU-87 D5 with the gun pods is oil leaking all over the place, taking a lot of damage. But if it can get on target, that could be a dead LA-5 very quickly. This uh, JU-87 again going in for a bombing strike. This 85 mil hasn't recovered in time. Goes down. Who needs mortars when you can use JU-87s? Okay. LA-5 head on does manage to win the engagement against the JU-87 that was already damaged, but there is another one following it up. That LA-5 really needs to get out of there because the second JU-87 is going to have something to say about that. Oh, it's managed to get on target. Nice! Second kill there for the LA-5. Kink's doing work with the LA-5 so far. Managed to get three kills uh, with that airplane. But can't head on the J87 at any point. Otherwise he will lose his fighter. And those fighters, they're pretty expensive. 130 points. Not something you're going to want to lose lightly. J87. Oh no, the head on. J87 takes it down with the gun pods. Nicely done by Sean. That'll sacrifice a couple of bombers in the process though. Jono's on their way to fill out this bottom side now. M3S going to be engaging the Grenadiers. Uh, a couple of squads would have been ideal just to kind of contest this flag in the open. Keep it at the 14 to 10. Uh, this may be a little bit overkill. Uh, however, he unloads them, starts attack moving them forwards, gets some decent support for them. It might work out quite nicely. JU-87 uh, coming in for the bombing strike onto this infantry. We'll end up pinning down all the Stargate DP. And just to kill one of the squads in the process as well. Allows the Ozzets to open to do some damage. And it's nice to see that Ginks has managed to stabilize on this top side. But the income is not in his favor. Sean, of course, running with the balanced deployment type. Will continue to maintain an advantage into the late game. And having found quite a lot of ground early on. This game isn't looking too great for Ginks. JU-87 does get forced back by the 37 mils of Ginks. Looks like Ginks investing in more AA to stop those JU-87 strikes from being so effective, which is a smart move, that's for sure. And these Chernos, uh, they seem to be slowly breaking down the Grenadiers here with their machine guns, but with the abundance of extra machine guns from Sean firing across the open, it is making things pretty difficult for him. I don't think this infantry is really going to get anywhere until some larger forces are brought in. Maybe some more infantry guns could be used or uh, another ISU-122. But considering there were two ISU-122s in Phase A, I don't think he actually has that many more cards of them available, which is a bit worrying uh, for his uh, late, late game chances. This JU-87 going to do a bombing strike just slightly to the left side of the Strelke there. Very smart move to make sure that he pins the Strelke but not his own squad so he can find that surrender and not lose any of his own troops. So he's managed to clean up the Strelke DP push which is great. Uh, these Chernos have all been forced back and it looks like Ginks is going to invest in mortars to take care of the MG-42s. Uh, the MG-42s can of course engage at 1,500 meter range, so we'll have to be a little bit careful as they are getting closer and closer to those mortars. There's also going to be a Stur 42 joining the field to engage some of these infantry at range. Pack 40 going to be taking out some of these infantry before they unload. Definitely don't want to let that happen if you are ever playing uh, still division. Happens to the best of us though. Many times have I seen top players of Steel Division lose infantry in transports. It mainly comes down to when you're just not paying attention. You're looking at a different side of the map and 
you brought in some reinforcements just a little bit too far up and your opponents kind of moved things forwards in the meantime and you get caught out. MD-42s though, damn they are so good for supporting these infantry, the Azastruppen there and the Grenadiers holding the Chernos at range whilst the MG-42s just mow them down. Pin them down, make them fall back. As they're running, they take more damage. We've also got the Stur 42 and the IG firing from the high ground here. Yeah. That's not so good. Either way, Stoker DP have managed to push into this town, take back the flag on Gink's side. But he is still putting up a good fight here. Definitely shouldn't have counted him out. I think if he'd made a few less mistakes in the early game, he'd actually be in a pretty dis good position right now. Ju87 coming in for the bombing strike, looking for the infantry gun. Not going to find it. Missed that strike. Ju87 also hovering around, looking for shots onto some of this infantry potentially. Maybe there to just absorb some shots from the AA. Be nice to see if uh, Ginks targets the 37 specifically at the Ju87 because uh, he might be able to shoot that down if he continues to hit it. Nope, change target onto the Ju87 D5. On this bottom side, MD42s now getting mortared by the 82 millimeter mortars. He does have the ISU 122 card coming in, so there is the uh, the card in phase B, obviously. I think we already realized that actually because of the ISU 122 that came into the center hill to reinforce that. But and this is going to be really, really helpful because the damage that the ISU 122s do will be enough to break down things like MG 42s and the Pac 40. Because the Pac 40 will struggle to penetrate the 125mm of frontal armor that the ISU 122 has. So the ISU 122 will have all day long to get those shots in. Although, JU87 looking for the hit with the 250 kilogram bomb. A few of these JU87s would certainly do the job over time. And the first one coming in here is going to make Ginks try and do a runner, reversing his tank as quickly as he can. Okay, 87 going in for the dive. Oh, I think Ginks managed to dodge it there actually with some nice micro. Was reversing, moved forwards, so the JU87 with its fire position command missed the mark. Now a Focke Wolf 190 F3 coming in with its 500 kilogram bombs. Looks like it lost sight of its target. Going to get forced back by the 37mm AA. On the top side, it's like uh, another Jeep going to get taken out by the Pack 40 up there. The two star Pack 40s are very scary sometimes. MG42 is continuing to get mortared. Unfortunately, these 82mm mortars, they don't do too much damage. They're good for pinning things down if you have stuff to surrender, your, like your opposing forces. Uh, but just in terms of like straight up damage, they really don't do too much. Much better off relying on his ISU 122 here. Get the, get out some veterancy and then uh, give it something to reload. And you can use those HE shells all day with the with the extra rate of fire provided by the veterancy. Wolf 190 F3 coming in for the bombing strike. The 37 mil here hasn't been unloaded yet. So that ISU 122 going to be taking a 500 kilogram bomb to the face. Here goes the dive. 37 mil is unloaded. A little bit too late though. The bomb does land. Does a little bit of damage to the ISU-122, but it looks like it's still relatively healthy. But as we can see, as Sean continues to slowly but surely grab control of this map, it suddenly went from 14 to 10 to 17 to 7. And now there's only 2 minutes and 25 seconds left on the clock. Ju87 coming in for the shot here. Nice to see that the leader has come in on this bottom side. Having brought that in either for the 37 or the ISU-122 is a good idea. 
And nice to see that there. Nice to see that Ginks had the right idea. JU87 forced to fall back early because if Sean had thrown that into a dive, it might have got shot down by the frontal hits from that AA. Doesn't want that to happen, of course. But it looks like Sean's position here in the town is just getting stronger and stronger throughout the game so far. And the IG-18 manages to take out that Stuart. Ginks is going to surrender. Calls it there. Minor defeat. 22 minutes and 46 seconds. Ginks, honestly, he put up a valiant fight against a very experienced player in Sean. Uh, I think that there were certainly some good thought process going on there for Ginks. But of course, I think his micro is lacking in comparison to Sean's. And maybe some of those infantry choices, especially at the start, needs to get those Stalky into better uh, sort of uh, transports so that they aren't as slow. And also unload them a bit more spread out so that if they do get attacked, they're not all pinned down at the same time. That's super important with your infantry because otherwise you, it leads to mass surrenders, which is obviously something that you never want. But in the end, Sean, great KD, 2,535 kills to 1,105 losses. There was a point in that game where Ginks kind of brought it back a little bit, but I feel like uh, just the pure balanced deployment type really just helped Sean uh, run over Ginks at the end of that. So... Yeah, the LA5FN, it managed to get three JU87 kills before it got shot down by a JU87 with gun pods. Uh, so that LA5FN was a good investment. The ISU122 there taking out two Stug 3s and a Stug 4. Very nice with the IG18. A uh, great job with that ISU122. And the ISU122 on the bottom side was a good choice, but uh, allowing the first one to die uh, was unfortunate to the pack 40 there. I don't think you really saw that happening. And uh, yeah, left that bottom side very exposed. Uh, but yeah, there's some some nice kills in here. But if we go over to losses, well, the Stug certainly helped from the high ground on the top side. The Tucker and Puya, very good uh, sniper unit, able to help the other infantry progress. Um, the Grenadiers, Erzats and Pioneeri from Sean, they aren't fantastic, but he managed to get away with it this time around. Um, the three-star veterans is certainly helping, uh, making sure he gets the, the best value he can out of those sorts of units. Uh, pack 40 there doing fantastically well. Another pack 40 doing very well here. Actually took out a bunch of snipers. Wow. Well, there you go. So yeah, 22 minutes, 46 seconds. Sean only just getting into his face seat and come there. But obviously had the advantage from phase B versus a Vanguard in terms of income. And he already had a very strong position from phase A. But that's it. That's going to be the first game of the second Steel Division 2 Championship. After this, I'm going to be bringing you the rest of the games of round two. And then we'll be moving into round three, uh, which is going to be technically the quarterfinals and then the semifinals and the final. So loads of content from this tournament to come. Interesting first game. Showing off the 122nd, haven't really seen them competitively much. So that was kind of interesting. But yeah, a solid start there to the tournament. Hopefully you guys are interested in more competitive content on my channel. Really appreciate all the support lately. And I'm doing my best to try and get back content consistently on the channel. So thanks for hanging about. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.